Whenever you start uh, working with a brand new computer program, you are always going to be faced with the tedious task of learning how to interface with the program. And what we mean by interfacing with the program, uh, that is knowing how to communicate with the software. And the software developers, uh, if it is a well-designed program, have developed a variety of ways in which you can tell the software code in the background to run uh, various scripts that will accomplish the tasks that you're trying to do. And like many well-developed software packages out there, the uh, designers of EDIUS have come up with three different ways to communicate your desires to the program. First of all, we see that you can use what we might call icons or buttons that you can point to and uh, do certain tasks. Like, for example, if we wanted to save our program, say we've been working with it for uh, you know a half hour or so, and we want to make sure that everything that we have done is saved, well, we could go up to this little icon here of a floppy drive and just click on it, and that would save our program. And for any one of these little icons or buttons, as you uh, hover your mouse over it, it will tell you exactly what it does. And it's good to familiarize yourself with all of the functions that each of these icons can do. You'll notice that some of them have a little down arrow uh, beside the icon. And what that means is, in addition to just clicking the icon to perform a particular task, there are also some other menu options that are hidden underneath this icon. And so if you go over to the little down arrow and click on it, you'll see that in addition to uh, saving the project, which is the main icon function, you can access other menu options. For example, let's say you wanted to do a save as of your program. You've got to a certain point in your project and you want to save that project with a different name. Well, uh, you can use the Save As button and call it something else. Let's maybe call it Burma. And now we have two separate projects, one called Myanmar and one called Burma, and you could go in different directions from this point on with those two projects. <clears throat> in addition to these menu buttons here that show up on the timeline, at the top of the timeline, you will see that uh, scattered throughout the program, there are other icons that uh, are important to learn the function of. And in a later tutorial, we will actually address many of the functions and features of these various icons. Up here at the very top of our bin window, we also see that there are a variety of icons that will allow us to access features and functions of the program. Let's say we want to access our title program. Well, we could just go up here and click on our titler, our big T there, and that will launch the quick titler that comes with the EDIUS program. If we wanted to change the way that we are viewing our clips, we can find the icon here of the options that are available as to how we view our clips. We notice there's a little down arrow there. Let's check that out. And this would allow us to change the way our um, whole bin window will look. We could change it to detailed text, small, just an icon and just a text based. So it's good to take a look at each one of these icons and uh, determine for yourself, learn for yourself what each one of these does. And to help you out with that, we will uh, record some tutorials on each one of these main windows and we'll look at these icon options more in more detail when we do that. A second way in which you can interact with the software is through the drop-down menu items that uh, appear at the very top of our preview window. And uh, you will find that there's a lot of redundancy built into the program. Many of the features and functions that you can access through the buttons are also now available as you start working with the menu options. For example, to save the program, we can see that under File, we can save project. Uh, we can do a save as, as we were pointing out earlier with our icon menu. And uh, we've already taken a look at some of these uh, menu options. We have just spent a, a recent tutorial talking all about uh, our settings. 
Let's maybe, as an example, take a look at a few items under the View menu. Here, this shows you what is going to be on screen and what you can uh, either remove temporarily or if you need to get uh, any uh, particular item back, you can go back to the View item and click on it and back it comes. Um, if you want to see how the audio uh, is peaking, you could open up that tool here and uh, play your clips and uh, see how you're doing on your audio. Let's uh, see what else we got here. We could uh, open up our vector scope and then as you're playing your clips, you could see how those uh, look on a vector scope. Yeah, maybe a couple of other things. We've already taken a look at some of these options. You know, we've changed our preview window to have only a single monitor showing at any given time. We could have it back at the dual mode. Let's say we wanted to watch our video play in full screen. We could set that and choose monitor one and then hitting your space bar, you could play that full screen. And when you want to get back uh, to your interface, you can just click on anywhere in the screen or double click on it, I should say, and that gets you back. I think you can also get back by hitting the escape key. Uh, we won't take a look at every one of these items. I just want to show you how uh, many of the things that uh, are available down here on the menu strip, for example, we could have toggled our bin window on and off here. Almost all of the same options are also available or accessible uh, through the main menu strip. Now, the overlay. Uh, this might be something interesting to point out. Let's say you want to know uh, what the uh, broadcast safe area is for any text or graphics that you might want to add to your video. Well, you could go down here and under the overlay, click on hit on this, and you'll see a little white square that shows up uh, in both the play and the record monitor. And uh, this lets you know where you should place any graphics or text that you feel are important uh, for everyone to be able to see when they watch this on a variety of different monitor setups. This is important, especially if your project is destined for broadcast, because as people watch this on a variety of different monitors, and the way it's uh, the signal is sent not every monitor is created equally and some might not see the whole screen as you see it and uh, if the text or graphic that you are creating is very important for your project and you want to be sure that people are going to see every character every letter of your graphic well then you want to make sure it's inside the broadcast safe area this is uh, not as important if you're only headed out to uh, internet because the internet is going to show the full screen. However, when I'm editing, I like to just see the video clean without any distractions here. And so while I'm editing my project, I usually have that off. And it's only when I'm working with text and graphics that I might put that on. This other information that is showing up here, it uh, uh, can sometimes be distracting as well. If you want to get rid of that, uh, you can go down to on-screen display and just click on the status and that takes that away as well. So now we have a nice clean image as we scroll through our, our timeline. So that's the second main way that you can interface with the software. The third way is through using keyboard shortcuts. And this is a good thing to learn because uh, it can really speed up the task of editing a project. The more keyboard shortcuts you know, and faster you can apply those keyboard shortcuts, the quicker that you will be able to edit. And so I really encourage everybody to learn as many keyboard shortcuts as you can. It will really help speed up your edits. And uh, thankfully, uh, Edius has adopted many of the very common keyboard shortcuts uh, that are used in a variety of other uh, computer software. For example, if we wanted to save our program, uh, rather than you know taking our mouse and going up here to this menu strip and looking for the little floppy drive and clicking on it, or going up to our menu strip and finding the right drop-down menu and going and clicking on on the save project item here, well, we could just use 
the keyboard shortcut. And the keyboard shortcut for save project is pretty universal. It's something that I, th I think is used in almost every computer program that I use, and that is the control S key to save your project. If we wanted to do a save as, rather than, you know, go down to the menu strip and click on the little down arrow and choose save as, well, we can just use the keyboard shortcut of shift control S. Now, something we could probably uh, point out that will help you learn these keyboard shortcuts is that all of those features and functions that currently have a keyboard shortcut associated with it, well, that keyboard shortcut is going to show up at the right-hand side of the function. Besides just pointing and clicking to the Save As, we could look over here and see what the keyboard shortcut is and start using that. And after you use it three or four times, you'll probably remember what each of these keyboard shortcuts are, and it'll save you a lot of time for you know, clicking around with your mouse, trying to find the right icon, and uh, accomplishing your tasks a lot faster just using your keyboard shortcut. And as we take a look at some of these other buttons, we see that uh, uh, many of them have these uh, keyboard shortcuts assigned uh, next to them. And uh, you'll find also that many of the familiar word processing uh, keyboard shortcuts are also available here uh, in the keyboard shortcuts that come by default with EDIUS. For example, if we wanted to delete a clip, we could just select any clip and hit the Control X key for delete. Now, just like word processor, that doesn't really delete it completely. It's not being removed from your hard drive. It's kind of uh, taken it away from the program and placed it on a clipboard, which you could then place at another point. Let's just think of this timeline perhaps as a word processing document. And let's say that that clip is something like a sentence that we have just removed from our document. And now we want to place it in a different location. Well, we could do that just by moving our timeline cursor or playhead, we might call it, to another point on our timeline and then use the familiar control V key to paste that same clip that we just removed with the control X key at a different point in our timeline. And it, the same is true also with the familiar copy paste keyboard commands that you might be familiar with from your word processor. Let's select this clip and do a copy of it. Uh, control C to copy. And let's just move our playhead down the line and hit the control V key. And we see we have this time copied uh, that clip. It's still here. We haven't removed it. We've copied it and placed it uh, in another location. And you'll find many ways that you can actually use this copy-paste feature of the keyboard shortcuts of EDIUS. For example, if we wanted to grab a whole section of clips, we could do that with the lasso method. Just uh, with your left mouse button pressed down, just kind of surround the clips that you wanted to copy and uh, hit the Control c key and uh, we could move that to another place down the timeline, or we could even create a new sequence. There's an icon button over here where we can create a second sequence. In fact, EDIUS, I believe, allows you now to create as many different sequences as you like. And so here, now inside a brand new sequence, we could hit the Control v as in Victor, key, and all of those clips that we copied with our lasso are now pasted to our new timeline sequence. Many of the same keyboard shortcuts that are used in other video editing software programs are also available to you here in EDIUS. So for example, just like I think almost every other video editing program out there, if you want to play your video, just hit the space bar and that plays the video. Do you want to stop the video? Just hit the space bar again. And like many other video editing programs, you uh, are able to use the JKL keys to control your play stop. So for example, just uh, try touching the L key and that's, you'll see that that plays the video. If you want to stop the video from playing, just hit the K key. 
if you would like to play your video in reverse, just hit the J key and that moves your timeline cursor back. These same keyboard shortcuts also work the same way in our preview window. Right now our focus is on the timeline window, but if we point up to our preview window and we see the green border surrounding our preview window, telling us that our focus is now on the preview window, well now, if we hit the space bar, well, <laughs> because our focus was on the record side of our preview window, it started actually playing our timeline. Let's move our focus over to the play preview monitor. You'll see the blue border now is, a, is around our play window. Now when we hit the space bar, we see that our preview monitor plays. And we can stop it with the space bar. Uh, we can also use the JKL keys here. Stop with the K, reverse with the J. Okay, and as you're previewing that, you can also use the very familiar I and O keyboard shortcuts to set your in and out point. And this is a good example of, of the redundancy that's built into the program. Instead of using your space bar to move the timeline or play the timeline, you can do that with your mouse. When you find a place that you want to set an endpoint, you could use it by pointing and clicking on a button or icon, and that sets your endpoint. You can drag that to another place and set your endpoint again by pointing to a button. But if you learn the keyboard shortcuts, you can see, let's uh, clear our out points, let's clear our endpoints, and do that again, this time using our keyboard shortcuts, L for play. And when we see a place that will work good for our endpoint, we can use the I key board shortcut to place our endpoint. And uh, well, we see that we have a change in exposure, so we might set another I, our endpoint, by hitting the I key again. And then when we've got enough of that, we can hit the out point. And, and then by hitting the space bar, we stop it. And now it's ready to place into our program. Well, I think that that uh, gives you a good um, orientation to the three main different ways that you can interface with the program. And in future tutorials, we'll uh, speak in more detail about uh, many of these menu options, many of the icon button options that you have, as well as how you can use your keyboard shortcuts and even how you can customize the keyboard shortcuts to uh, your own personal preference. In fact, I believe that that is what we're going to do in our very next tutorial, show you how you can customize your keyboard shortcuts to your own preferences. But now I believe that does it for learning the EDIUS interface in EDIUS 7.